So worksheet day 14 in business math, again, is on percents and their applications. We're doing discount markups and markdowns. So leaving off from where, or continuing from where we left off, this one says in the following problem, compute the selling price and the dollar markup based on the selling price. So I know my cost plus my markup is equal to my selling price. This time my base, my 100% is next to the selling price. So I know my cost was $72. I know my markup percent is 26%. And so if I want to find my selling price, I need to find the percent on the cost or the percent of the cost based on the selling price. So in this case, I have to subtract to find that value up there. Just like when I knew the selling price and the cost, I ended up having to subtract. So if my full price is 100%, my markup was 26. 100 minus 26 means 74% would go here with my cost. So when I'm interpreting this, I'm saying 74% of, based on my selling price, is going to equal my cost. It's switched around because it's based on my selling price instead of basing it on my cost. I don't know what my selling price is, I know what my cost is. My cost is that $72, so just like on those previous ones, in order to figure out the selling price, since of means times, I end up having to divide by 74%. So I'm going to take $72 and, whoops, and divide it by 74%, not 72%, in order to find out what my selling price is. So if I take 72 and I divide it by 0.74, I get 97.297, so $97.29 rounds up to 30 cents. So my selling price, $97.30. In order to find the dollar markup, I could either do 26% of the 97.30, or again, the easiest way probably is just to go ahead and subtract. If I take $97.30 and subtract the $72, I get $25.30. The other way I could do it is say 26% of the selling price. 0.26 times $97.30 should give me the same value, $25.30 when I round it off to the nearest cent. So my selling price, $97.30. My dollar markup, $25.30. says in the following problem, compute the selling price in dollar amount based on the selling price, round your response to the nearest cent. So again, we know the cost plus the markup is equal to the selling price, that we're basing it on the selling price, the 100% goes there. Our cost is $87, the percent markup is 47%. So since we know that the cost plus the markup have to add up to 100 we're going to take 100 and subtract that 47, which means this had to be 53%. 53% plus 47% is 100%. So when we translate this, we're going to say 53% of the selling price, because it's based on the selling price, is equal to the cost. We know the cost is 87 Since of means times, in order to find the selling price, we're going to divide by that 53%. So 87 divided by 0 0.53. 87 divided by 0.53 gives me 164.150. We're rounding to the nearest cent, so $164.15. $164.15. And in order to find the dollar markup, we're just going to subtract the 164.15 minus the 87. So 164.15 minus our 87 means our markup, 
$77.15. And again, just to double check that, 47% of my base should equal my markup. 0.47 times the 164.15 should give me $77.15, and it does. Third one, same kind of thing. In the following problem, compute the selling price and dollar markup based on the selling price. Always got to see what our base is. Round our response to the nearest cent. So the cost plus the markup is equal to our selling price. The selling price is our base. My cost is $55. My markup is 27%. And so if I want to see the percent of the selling price that's equal to my cost, 100 minus 27 means that this had to be 73%. 73% of my selling price is going to give me what my cost is. So 73% of the base is equal to the cost. The cost is $55. Of again means times. And so again, in order to solve that for the selling price, we end up dividing by that 73%. So 55 divided by 0.73 gives me $75.342. So $75.34, since there's a two behind it when I round to the nearest cent. $75.34. So my selling price is $75.34. I need to find my markup. The easiest way is just subtract. $75.34 minus $55. So if I take my 75.34 and subtract 55 from it, I get $20.34 for my dollar markup. And again, if you took 27% of the selling price, the $75.34, you should end up with the $20.34. So 0.27 times 75.34 gets the same answer. Four, five, and six, look, more tables, they look the same. <laughs> it says in the following problems, compute the dollar markup and the cost based on the selling price, round your response to the nearest cent. So my cost plus my markup is equal to my selling price, just like before. We're basing it on the selling price, so the 100% has to go over here. This time we know the selling price is 156. We know the percent markup is 49%. So we would say 49% of the selling price is going to equal the markup. 49% times the selling price, $156 then. So we can go ahead and just multiply. 0.49 times the selling price, 156, gives me a markup of $76.44. And again, the easiest way to find the cost here is just to go ahead and subtract. If I take 156 and I subtract my 7644, that should give me my cost up there on the top. So 176 minus, or 156 minus 7644 gives me Now, if we wanted to, we could fill in the percent here. 100 minus 49 would be 51%, so that if you took 51% of your cost, you should get the 79.56. 0.51 times 156, sure enough, gives us that same 79.56. So we have multiple ways we could get our answers, depending on how comfortable we are with percents. But this one's always based on the selling price. So 51% of this value 
is equal to this, 49% of this value is equal to this. And 100% of that value is equal to the 156. Number five, in the following problem, compute the dollar markup and the cost based on the selling price. Round your response to the nearest cent. So again, my cost plus my markup is always equal to my selling price. I'm basing it on my selling price, so my 100% goes here. I know my selling price this time is $117. I know my percent markup is 31%. So that I know that 31% of the selling price is equal to that markup. And so I'm just going to take 0.31 times my 117, 31% of my selling price. 0.31 times 117 gives me $36.27. So my dollar markup, $36.27. In order to find my cost, the easiest way is just subtract 117 minus 3627. So if I take 117, I subtract my 3627, $80, whoops, eighty dollars and seventy-three cents. Eighty dollars and seventy-three cents is my cost. So my dollar markup 3627, my cost eighty dollars and seventy-three cents. Number six says, in the following problem, compute the dollar markup and the cost based on the selling price. So we know the cost plus the markup is equal to the selling price and that we're basing it on the selling price. The 100% goes here. My selling price is $179, so I know my base. My percent markup is 29%. So I would say 29% of my base, my selling price, is equal to the markup, since it's the percent markup. So 0.29 times my selling price, 179, is going to give me my markup. 0.29 times 179, $51.91. My dollar markup, $51.91. My cost then, the easiest way to find my cost, take the 179, subtract the 5191, and so 179 minus 51.91 gives me 127.09. So my cost, $127.09. So number seven here, a little bit different than what we've been doing because we don't have the selling price and the percent markup. It says for the following problem, compute the dollar markdown and the markdown percent. If necessary, round your answer for the markdown to the nearest hundredth of a percent. I underline that because round to the nearest hundredth of a percent is a little different than what we usually do by rounding to the tenth of a percent, so I wanted to point that out. Now here we have an original selling price and we're going to reduce the price. We want to figure out how much the dollar markdown is. Well, if my original price was $57, but I sold it for $55, that means I marked it down by $2. If I want to find my percent markdown, I have to take the part divided by the base. The base is going to be what you started at. So the amount I marked it down by was $2, I want to go with my base, my original price, 57. So I'm going to do 2 divided by 57. 2 divided by 57 gives me 0 0.0350. I want to round, oops, I better go one more, 0 0.8. I want to round it off to the nearest hundredth of a percent, so I have to move it two places, tenths, hundredths, so I had that extra digit there, so I know I have to round it off to 3.51 for my markdown percent. 3.51. And 
eight, and nine. Same kind of thing for the last two problems here. It says for the following problem, compute the dollar markdown and the markdown percent. If necessary, round your markdown percent to the nearest hundredth of a percent. My original selling price is $43. I reduced it down to $32. So if I take 43 and subtract 32, it means $11 is how much I marked that item down by. So if I marked it down by $11, if I'm going to find my percent, I'm going to take my part, divide it by my base. My part was $11. My base is my original starting price, the $43. And so if I take 11 and I divide it by 43, I get 0 0.255813. Make sure I carried enough digits. I want to round it off to the nearest hundredth of a percent. So first change it to a percent. Multiply by 100 or just move your decimal two places. Tenths, hundredths. There's a one behind that eight, so I leave it alone. So 25.58 would be my markdown percent. 25.58%. Number nine, same kind of thing. My original selling price is $65. My reduced selling price is $48. So if I take 65 and I subtract 48, 65 minus 48 is going to give me 17. $17 is my dollar amount that I marked it down by. I want to find the markdown percent. So to find a percent, we take the part divided by the base. My part that I marked it down by was 17. The base is always the original price that I started at, 65. And so I'm going to take 17 divided by 65. I get 0 0.261538, carrying it enough places so I can round to the nearest hundredth. First, I have to change it to a percent by multiplying by a hundred or moving my decimal two places. Tenths, hundredths, the five is followed by a three, so I'm just going to use 26.15. I don't have to round it up since there's a three behind that five, so 26.15%. So that is the end of day 14's sheet. Go ahead again on your pie chart. Under the percents in their applications, the section called discounts, markup, and markdowns, those will be the next kind of problems there on your pie chart.